In this lesson, we're gonna look at the functionality and usage of role-based access control or RBAC. If we look at the skills being measured, we're now diving into the ideas around describing Azure governance features. And then over the next set of lessons, we'll look at all those different attributes around RBAC, resource logs, tags, policy blueprints, and the cloud adoption framework. So that's where we're gonna focus. Role-based access control is a key part of Azure. We have the idea of a role assignment. Now, if I think about, well, what is a role assignment? Remember, we have our Azure AD. So our Azure AD has, for example, our users. That could be people. That could be service principles for an application. We have groups and other types of things as well. Then in terms of our resources, remember we have a hierarchy. In my Azure idea, we have the idea of a root management group, but then I can have a whole hierarchy of management groups that we use for various different things. So I have this set here of management groups. And then under that, at a certain point, well, we have a certain subscription And then within the subscription, well, I can create resource groups. So then I have the idea that I have resource group one, I can have resource group two, et cetera, et cetera. I have other resource groups. And then we finally create a resource. That resource could be a VM, it could be a storage account, it could be a database, whatever that is, but we have multiple resources. So we have all these different scopes where I can be granted a role. If you remember, management groups, subscriptions, resource groups, we could assign role-based access control, we could assign policy, we could assign budgets. So right now we're focused on this idea of a role assignment. So we have a certain scope and we have a certain identity, user, group, service principle. And so the next thing then we have is, well, we have the idea of a role. And a role is essentially a set of actions that that role enables me to do. So a role assignment is a collection of these three things. A role assignment is the idea, and let's change color. A role assignment is for a certain identity, I'm having a certain role being assigned at a certain scope. So these, all of this, these are the possible scopes to which a role can be assigned. So I'm taking a specific role, a set of actions, and I'm giving it to a certain identity at a certain scope. So those three things together are a role assignment. And remember it's inherited. So if I grant a role at the subscription, was inherited down to all of the resource groups, the resources inside it. If I granted it at a management group up here, well, it's inherited to all the child management groups, and then all the subscriptions, the resource groups, the resources within that. So this is the point of role-based access control. There are a huge number of built-in roles. I can create custom roles. And the key point again is this role assignment Remember, any time we talk to Azure, we're going through the Azure Resource Manager. This is where role assignment is enforced. So there is no bypassing this. I can't say, oh, I'll go through this special command line or PowerShell or REST API or portal. There's no magic. These are always gonna get enforced, just like policy. So let's see this in action. So if we jump over for a second, if we go and look. Now again, I can apply these at many different levels, but let's take the idea of applying it at a subscription. So if I go home and we'll scroll down and look at subscriptions, I could look at a particular subscription and I'm gonna to go to access control, identity and access management I am. And here, I can actually see all the different roles that exist. 
Now, because I'm looking at a subscription, every single possible role is gonna show because within a subscription, I can have any resource provider and any resource. But many of these roles are specific to a certain type of resource. There are some generic ones. So if we look at these first three, we have owner, contributor, and reader. Owner can do anything, including changing permissions on a resource. Contributor can do anything, but cannot change the permissions. So they can't give someone else access. And a reader will can view everything, but cannot change anything. So these are very generic, they apply to anything. But then other types of role will target particular things. So if we looked at a role, for example, that was specific to, let's say a virtual machine contributor, here, let's actually scroll over. Let's actually go and look for a second. So there are all the roles. But what I actually want to do is scroll over and see the role. It's not letting me scroll. So I'll go to my role assignments. And over here, what I can do is I'll look at a certain role assignment. In this case, I'm just going to pick my network contributor then. So here I can see the network contributor role. And what I can see here, these are those permissions, the actions that particular role can do. So here, this is at the control plane. So I'm looking at actions. This is the ARM control plane. Notice they're built around the idea of the resource providers and then the particular actions I have. And you don't have to worry about the details. The whole point is a role is just a huge collection of actions. And then what I do is I add a role assignment. So just exactly as we said, I pick the role that I want to give. So I could say reader. Then I pick who I want to give it to, a user, group, service principal, or managed identity. And I would add those people. And the scope always the subscription. I've already picked it, so it's those three things. And we can see there's already a whole bunch of role assignments. If I was to look at something within this particular subscription, so we can see it's got a whole bunch of spending and other things within there, but if we go and look at the resources within this subscription, I'm just gonna pick, it really doesn't matter what I pick, I'm gonna pick um, Azure Automation Solution, sure, and look at the access control and role assignments you'll notice there's a whole bunch of role assignments. And if you look at the scope, where does it come from? Most were inherited from the subscription. So this shows that whole idea of role assignments are inherited down. You can see here, well, this one was actually inherited from a management group. And depending on where I was, you might see some that actually came, well, here's one from Root. You might see ones coming from the resource group. You might have ones directly on the resource itself. So it really just depends. But that is what role-based access control is. It's the idea that I have roles, which are sets of actions built from the resources in the resource providers that I'm giving to a certain identity, user, group, service principal, to a certain scope. And the key point, remember, is inheritance. They're gonna get inherited down the stack all the way down to the resources. And they are additive. If I have a role assignment here and here and here and here, my sum of permissions are all of those added together. There is no deny assignment that's standard in Azure. Deny is reserved for very special use cases like blueprints, which we will see later on.